Here it is. Game match two of today on Core Castle. It's Pondergard versus Argonautas, Bansar, Falcon, Tigran, Shenji, Grenadiers, Chevaliers, and Liao Rangers. Um, so we will be seeing some exotics in this one. And I'm curious to find out how they will be played, like you said. The Cocos and the Flames, Fire Explosive boys here. Mm. Yeah, it's going to depend on how well each team can punish mm -hmm. the enemy's specials yep. or how well they can defend their own. Exactly. Um, or if they even choose to, to pick them, because we've seen from yeah, Buddy how strong the combination of like 40s uh, with Crescent Monks together with like just a couple of shields are um, if you fight them really, really well. Yeah, so, and saying that, look at the number of monks we have. Yeah, absolutely. Like the amount of monks here. in the first match was absolutely insane. I think almost mm. every single player had them. I think Pongard is pretty much, like you said, every single player with monks. Mm -hmm. um, not so much for Argonauts, but still quite a few monks. Yep, and in, in the amount of malls, yeah, the amount of malls on, on uh, Pongard's side is also insane. Even Pine running it normally, picking the the, mm. like, the pikes or whatever. But uh, yep, quite a few range heroes on um, Argonauts yep. side Absolutely. are actually five range heroes and a lot of cav for them as well. Are they bringing the javelins? No, not even bringing the javelins. So we saw Wise Series just using two units of javelins, but to destroy the tower, but that's not going to happen, I think. Mm. Um, they yes. do have one of the tier 5 jabs, but it's not the same. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, is, I'm just I'm quite surprised the amount of cav from Argonauts here. Yep. There's like 4 or 5 units of Hussars, quite a few dagger axes as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, 2 longbows and 3 muskets for the defenders is going to be... Uh, yep. can be quite punishing. Yeah, if, especially if they can find those Cocos and those flames and mm -hmm. pick them off. Yep. So yep. Maybe we'll see an aggressive defense here. It might be, it might be. And also expect the Lombos, of course, to delay the battering ram at the start. That's uh, one of the things teams have been doing since last season, I think, at least. At least all of yeah, them have picked so, up on it. So. Yeah, so it doesn't work on every map, so mm -hmm. teams need to figure this out. Obviously, Plebs was using it quite a lot. There are two different types of rams in the game. Um, one of them you can stop by shooting the units, and one of them you can't. Um, so that's why you'll see a lot of teams doing it. On this map, obviously, it works. Um, there are... As long as you as long as you're hitting one of them, it should stop the the ram. So you only really need one longbow there, but having mm -hmm. two is fine. Yep, absolutely. All right, so let's find out how the artillery battle is going to go. To start off with, looks like the governments are going to start quickly on the defender side. So yeah, B side is interesting. They yep. defenders might be able to win it if they can hit this shot. Because if they exactly. if they win this trade on B, which they have done now, they should be able to kill a culvern, uh, a trap as well. Yep, and the scorpio also still alive, so definitely a trap is needed there. You can see the muskets running to it as well. Mm -hmm. On, yeah, the, on the center, we got a couple guys climbing, trying to at least. Still... Yeah, so you can climb up those rocks, mm -hmm. um, which most people know by now. You just have to <laughs> jump all the way up and then you can get up onto the top wall. But they're, they're taking so long to do it, it's not really worth it. Yeah. But Wolf 4 3 will get up, so maybe they'll get around. Yeah, exactly. You see now they slide around the wall, then you get up on top of the wall on the side. Mm -hmm. Although they failed it, and now they're. Unfortunately, <laughs> they didn't quite yeah. <laughs> If anyone would have been able to do it, it would have been more far. He was on a podcast as well. He's going to try it anyway. Um, he's doing it again there. He's, he's just slightly too low the first time. Yep, looks like it. No, no, Once again. Yep, it again. All right. They'll get up there some, somewhere, for sure. They'll get there eventually. Yeah, exactly. It would have been quicker just to climb the ladders, but they'll get there eventually. We'll see, we'll see. All right, so middle tower landed. Uh, looks like the Baron Ram is uh, fully not. delayed, so no units are even pushing it right now. I think these Dieter for Life Imperial Spear Guards are going to push it and try and push it now. Yeah, one of the longbows is trying to delay this tower now, but it's, I feel like it's a bit too little too late. Mm -hmm. So this right-hand tower will hit, and the B tower is going to hit as well. They are fully leaving B side now. The tower is getting close. They're already running to supply to change their unit. Yeah. Which is a good use of time, so you don't have to sit and wait till it hits. You can be on supply ready and waiting. All right, so I think it's time to start looking at the units right now. Uh, so we can see Sifonario out on the defender side. They're hiding behind the building in the center. A really st strong setup, I think, at the gate right now. With the ca oh, oh, strong. It's, it's camels, so that's strong. Backed up by what's yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that I don't like, so when defenders have a resupply so close, you don't need your specialist out this early. Mm -hmm. Especially in rivals where you don't have a death limit. Yep. A lot of teams will just go and suicide once for your specialist. So you have the supply right there. A little bit further away now, obviously, with the change of the map, but they could quite easily just have that hero back on that supply waiting. As soon as the enemy starts pushing, then he changes to his Cocos, comes back to the point. Because then you don't risk them getting jumped on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, it saves you having to have people defending them, and it's just a lot safer that way. Yep, plenty of time there. Yeah, so we can see uh, Pondergard actually getting on the wall, just scouting it out for now. Um, Looks like they're rotating B-side, so maybe yeah. they try and do something over there because they know how right hard A and B can be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wysos here is still chilling, just kind of around the A point. They don't even really have uh, any units set up around the B point to make sure that they get the flank 
Yeah, I mean, it's a very slow rotation by Argonauts mm -hmm. here. If they're not rotating yeah. in time for this, they could get Jaru's very Jaru's getting killed by Rapper Brave there. Nice pickup. Pretty sure he got more grab, so apparently some people still play the more grab. <laughs> it, it's still good in tournaments. Oh, yeah. Um, just, just because it then means they have a 40 yeah. you fight. Mm -hmm. so. Ooh, another nice pickup there yeah, from SKW with the attacks. Uh, yeah. So on both sides, Ponegard getting one. One hero kill. Of course, it's going to be long timers right now, but it will add up eventually. Argonauts still with no units here, so they're just giving this side for free. Mm -hmm. Which is a questionable decision, but we'll see how it pays off. Yeah, it definitely feels like they want to give Polnagar the walls here, including A, and then maybe defend B inside the city with the heavy calf that we saw. Would be my guess right now. No, I, th I feel like they will still want to make a trade because they've got the Coco still at the front. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that's throwing me off. So I think they might still want to try and do something. But no, they are falling back now. Yeah. I guess they're just trying to waste as much time as possible, making them think they were defending, now they're running Same. back. Super so maybe they're, they're going to now do this inside the city that's sort it. of defense, yeah. where they're very aggressive inside. That's what yeah. it looks like, because they are stacking up on that in front of B at the moment. Mm -hmm. so. yep. And they are getting a couple kills there. Like, I think it was the Claymores here that were killed a little bit. There's one oh. more being picked off here in the center. Mr. Dip on SKW it. getting a bit caught there because again he tried to rush for the resupply to go and block it mm -hmm. and realized there was actually units there, like we were talking about in the loading screen. So they're they getting a few picks now. Yeah, they're going to try this aggressive hold, which it could work quite well because the attackers don't have a yeah. single ranged hero, do they? Yeah, so, yeah. No, they've got uh, Mr. Billy D. Is yeah, they got, the, the attackers got the flamers out, but you can already see some guys want to go back, get in on the unit because going down with these units is apparently not the best idea. Yeah, this, might be this feels kind of range, like yeah. the um, the defense that I think you guys did for the first time on uh, Harbor City. Do you know what I mean? Like oh, the, yeah. No, I know what you mean, yeah. So behind holding the buildings more aggressively kinda? in the front, it gives you more time hiding behind the building so you can't get trapped. But yeah, no. I mean, this is a smart decision for them, I, I think. This is now wasting a lot of time. Mm -hmm. so the enemy can't just rush through. They don't have 10 minutes to siege last point or take B, then have like 12, 30 minutes to siege last point. This is wasting... Like at least a minute already has gone by. Yeah, exactly. so this is just a good chance of wasting time. It depends how cleanly they can do this now. Mm -hmm. Can they either trade well and hold this, or can they retreat back and not lose any units when yeah, the enemy so, pushes? Yeah. And if any um, team would be able to push. break this kind of strategy, I think it would be Pondegard. Pondegard have been able to, in Germany, Almada, even win a game against, uh, not sure who it was, I think it was against Kebabs actually, uh, when they yeah. played full calf and Pondegard was able to utilize these like high ground stairs to right. defend Pondegard's against it. Coco's, Icalians are now getting into position. If they can get yeah. a good throw here, they can wipe a lot of units. Mm -hmm. Defenders do have Flames and Coco's here themselves, though. And if they drop this supply, I feel like this is a bad choice, but it yeah, doesn't look like they're to this either. It's kind of a half commit, half not, which yeah, is they're, not... They are going to set on the supply, but Pondegard is really inside the city right now, so we're going to get the Kevin Outriders here as well. Ooh, Mr. Diplomat with the Icalian there. Good throw, I think, right on top. And also the Wolf Silent Flamers there is going off. Pondegard is hard winning the other side though, I think, but big Sicilian throw there from IPOP as well on Pondegard's side. Ooh, yeah, Argonaut is winning the top fight. Now they need to get the other fight where Pion is standing with his shields. Alright, do I still have you? Uh, my game crashed. So oh, okay, 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 that's why. All right, all right. Do you want me to share screen? Right, so, uh, you could look at it. Okay, good. All right, so Pondegard clean up at the, at, the, at the supply point. Mr. Bility running. They also got their uh, Sicilian killed. So the gate actually still closed. So Pondegard need to find a way around because the weathering ram is actually really far away. So if they want to use the tempo and actually get to the other side of the field, they need to be quick. But of course, Argonaut is sitting on the supply. So you can see them swapping out the units right away. And they're already starting to run towards the B point to make sure that they know what's going on. Um, yeah, it was. I mean, it was good defense for Argonauts. They, even yep. though they had a unit of camels on the gate, they were still the right number. They still won quite cleanly on that. So. Yep, absolutely. A really good start to throw with the Sigalian and the Flamers did really well. They were well protected. I think still alive, for as far as I can see. I think the biggest thing was the, the Cocos. I think when they threw their Cocos, I think they killed most of Pongard's yep. specials. Absolutely. And then the coconuts from Pongard did come in eventually from the high ground, but I think most of the fight was already over by then. Ooh, nice scramble here on top of the wall, getting these uh, Mermillions with just the heroes. Super bomb. Yeah, again, good aggressive pick from them, yeah. so Argonaut Ooh. playing very aggressive this game. Yep, but people getting the counter grab there. Yeah, they managed to get the charge Ooh. off, which is very strong heroes. So. So. Yeah, it looks like Pongo's going to rotate for a, a 
behind B push now. I'm back in the game, by the way. Um, so going for a, a backside push down into B, which, again, it, it is hard to pull this off because the defenders have the advantage mm -hmm. of that uh, resupply there. So yep. it's basically the same thing mirrored but on the other side of the map. Absolutely. They do have so... a 30 second timer though because Galfretus is still out. He's got Kev though. So the once he respawns, he will be able to flank with the Kev unit. Mm. So I might... do still have a unit of camels in the gate though, so they won't be getting yeah. through there with Kev anytime soon. Yeah, that, that's the defenders. I'm sorry. So you can see a lot of calf units from the defenders going to the base point here. Uh, Ongod do have the advantage of being able to just go, okay, mm -hmm. fuck it, and then we'll just push the last point instead. Oh, the so flamers, the flamers. Ongod. They found the flamers. The, here's, the, here's the hero that we talked about. So the flamers, Most I think they were able to run away. Yeah, the flamers yeah. got through those. So five, two, no, no, Pine got them all. Oh, yeah, they got another yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Pine got all of them in the end. So nice pickup there. And I don't think Argonauts will be able to retaliate anything here. I think there's one individual flame left, and that's it. So it's a very good pickup from them, but it is three hero deaths for it, so yeah. it is wasting time because they won't be able to push now until those guys respawn. Exactly. But do those three guys now spawn on the gate with some melees and clear those camels? You know, that's a free pick over there. Mm -hmm. uh, although the gate is still closed, so they would have to open the gate first. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's quite slow, um, but yeah. So they definitely have enough time to do one more really good push, maybe even two if they if they are fast about it. But you can see they are trying to again look for the specialist. I think there's another unit of flamers here that has only one though. Uh, I mean, it looks like Ponga are trying to do a little bit of a bait and rotate kind mm -hmm. of play. They're trying to draw the enemy to the last point to then push on to B. The problem is the defenders rotate so much faster yep. that it's difficult to actually get this play to work. Absolutely. We're going to trap. So we're going to fly on the camels. At camel. some point, they've just got to say, "Screw it, we need to go in," because mm -hmm. they're going to waste end up wasting too much time otherwise. Because if they leave it another minute or two, they'll just have one push and that's it. So they need to start pushing in the next 30 seconds or so, or they won't have time to do anything else. Exactly. Uh, we do see, I think it's Pine actually respawning at the gate there with double calf, so they want to probably destroy... Yeah, there's two sets of calf there. They're, they're looking inside to try and open the gate, mm -hmm. which I think they could open that. The camels might hit them while they're doing yeah, it, but they sure. should be able to Pine is going to try for sure. The traps are continuing to flying, but we can see... Off guard Brios actually trying to stop that. Uh, SKW backing up Pine at the gate. This gate might be very critical here because there are so many units of calf out there. And yeah, if they get that they gate there, open, push. through, but... Yeah, Pine trying to open it right now. There, but there's still camels there, so I don't think they'll be able to make it through. Ooh. Pongard are now starting to push at the back now, though. Yeah, because right. they've, they've seen that they've drawn a lot of pressure to the front. There's a third hero going to the front gate now, yep. so they're, they're deciding to finally start pushing down. But it's a bit of a line. They're not really pushing well mm -hmm. together. They're kind of slowly going one by one. And, this... and a good, good flank of monks as well on the top side from Argonauts. So. Zikalian are getting in place. They're throwing right now, right on top of these Fortabachos. And if there's still one flamer that's going to do work as well from, from, from Mr. Yeah, I mean, Two Lang's so. kept uh, two of them up on the wall, three of them up on the wall, so if mm -hmm. he can get in, he's just killed some of the Cocos as well. That was a good little push there, but can Argonauts actually hold at the bottom? Because again, you see what I was talking about with the Cocos, like Wolf 4 through here with his Cocos is getting so much damage down on the bottom of the stairs here. Mm -hmm. Big thing for Argonauts is that they need to not die with their heroes, grab another unit from that supply and come back. Yep. But is it too late now? Yeah, you can see from Bowman stepping in the supply, but here comes, the, only... here comes the calf from all uh, from Yeah, all there are the 40s from uh, Ponga, but they are at the bottom of the stairs. So if this calf goes in now, it could wipe a lot of this, but he's not. He's standing and watching. Oh, but the calf is coming in from Pondergard now. They actually managed to go open the gate, so now they can also rotate with the calf. They need to get a supply, though, to get new units quick, but this yeah, is a nice they gotta punish from this calf uh, There we go. Nice cleanup there on the supply point. Yeah, it was not the best cav usage from Argonauts there. Absolutely, I was just waiting there. Um, they are flanking bus. again, so Drowsh is now flanking from the top wall. They might have to clear some stuff here, but yeah. it's actually it's a decent clear back from Argonauts. They Ooh, can yeah. push the supply now before they get units out. If they can wipe this supply here, they should be able to clean this Absolutely. up. Absolutely, they're still stepping on supply. Nice use hard charge. There's another like unit of... It needs these shield mains to get that supply exactly. now and clean yeah. up all these heroes. We can see claimers coming in as well from uh, God King Asura, but they may not be able to match up against what's coming in for from uh, Argonautas right now. Only heroes from Pondengard fighting Dagrax on supply. Dagrax is going through as well, but they're losing that supply push even mm -hmm. with the units there because they went in one by one. But they're starting to Pondengard going now. for the final. Pondengard going for the final with the calf now. It's two minutes already ste stepping on the B point and also going to the final. So trying. Yeah, Argonautas have wiped that, but they are down on units. If they can mm -hmm. rotate now to base point, they should be good here. Be, the cav from Pongard is now rotating to B, so it looks like they're going to try and commit for B now, but is it too late? Ooh. I feel like if they committed to base point there instead, they had the rotation, yeah. they had the position really there, but now... there from the front retro. Pongard still yeah, wanted to go for that supply. And if Argonauts waste too much time trying to defend the supply, they could uh, lose B, so mm -hmm. they need to just let the supply go here. 
and flank from both sides because they were trying to contest it. Like, mm -hmm. Den Attacks doesn't need to be here. All the heroes here have units. You don't need to contest the supply. You need to push in now together as a team and, and completely sandwich this. They need to go now before the rest of Pongard respawns again. Yeah, they're absolutely destroyed they have, they have right a now. huge advantage here. Yep. As you can see, they're just wiping all their heroes. Absolutely destroyed there. Arcanaut is still running on a high there. Two minutes left, only camels and two heroes inside the city right now. Now they need to be careful they don't get rushed towards mm. base point. But I don't think Pongard have enough units here to be able to do this. Yeah, it's two units of Hussars coming in and one unit of ISG. So Hussars can do a lot of that work here, but don't think it's going to be enough against what's on the field right mm. here. I mean, Pongard point. still have the advantage of numbers, right, mm. unit-wise. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, they just don't have the they're, units. They're just out of time and they're not, not be able to group right now. Mm. Arcanaut is doing a really good job at the start of the game here to delay like what you talked about, like starting at the A point, just making it look like they were going to defend, then making sure that they were delayed on the uh, on the side. But let's follow the fight here because it's still going on. A minute left. Base point is looking a little bit risky, yeah. but they are flanking outside, so it should be fine. Let's see if they can get any good usage of these charges here from Pongard. I mean, if you look at the units right now, like Pongard have an advantage on units. Mm -hmm. But that advantage has now been dropping and dropping and dropping, and yeah. actually they've got 100 surfs more, so it's actually pretty even right now. Absolutely. Pongard is able to finally group with a couple guys, though, in the center, just right in front of the final. 45 seconds, though. They've got to start yeah. capping B in about 10 seconds to finish it if they want to. And I don't there think they're losing this fight anyway. Yeah. Crescent is another fighting for Kawacho here, here so. as well. 30 seconds left. They are starting to cap it. But Pongard yeah, still yeah, fighting at the final, so they, they, they won't be able to gather units to the B point. Um, yeah, it's over by now. The, the, what Argonauts did really well there is they, they broke it down to a very chaotic fight. Mm -hmm. so they split the fight up, they had lots of small fights everywhere. They weren't taking those big head-on fights for Pongard. It was a lot of flanks, it was a lot of uh, trying to split them up into smaller groups. Mm -hmm. Which it was obviously was a very smart move, it worked out for them. It yeah. was risky at one point, they got close to losing it, but then because their spawn is so close and they hadn't died yet, they respawned with Cow, came back and wiped it on that B-side. So really good defense by Argonauts there. Yep, absolutely. Argonauts, uh, I think, abusing... Like, not playing into the strength of Pondegard, which is team fighting, and uh, very, very well done. I mean, Pine was able with his team to get a couple of these specialists out uh, at the second fights, but it was not enough. Yeah, and you could see they caught them off guard. Like, Pondegard was obviously showing that they just weren't sure how to push into that. They were like, mm -hmm. oh, no one's done this before. I mean, what do we do? They, they hung around on the walls quite a lot. They wasted a lot of time sort of standing there and watching and deciding where to go. Because they just obviously weren't expecting that kind of defense, which is why these kind of defenses work a lot of the time. Because you catch the enemy off guard. Mm -hmm. So it really, really... Good decisions there from Argonauts, really well played. Yep, absolutely. Showing a more for uh, more versatile style here, um, going in the defense. So I'll be very curious to see how they attack now. Um, all right, let's go for the MVPs as well. Uh, Kiel doing really well, 6012, 78. We're seeing another one with seven heroes as well. Nice stun, also above the 100 unit kills. And Wolf Silent, the team captain, doing really well also. And then we got Oriator with 5 hero kills and also 12 assists. And Mr. Diplomat, we saw him a lot in the front line with his flamers. And his Akalians, 18 assists, doing really, really well there. Uh, Pine, he's back, stepping in for the team. Making sure to get the MVP, but not with the score he wanted, I think. Uh, especially after taking the loss there. And then we got uh, Rappler Braves still fighting with his team captain quite often there. Getting the 4 hero yes. kills. Some really good uh, clears on both sides there. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like one side stomped the other. You know, some really good fights there. Just... Argonauts had the advantage. They just were slowly yep. winning. I mean, they weren't trading that well. There were some of the early fights they traded yeah, so, um, yeah. evenly at best. But they just had the advantage from the defenders of spawning so close. They were playing very aggressive and they didn't let the enemy set back up again. So they never let Pongard reset to 15. You know, as we saw in that respite towards the end, Pongard pushed in with five or six heroes, had that supply. But then Argonauts had the unit and hero advantage in numbers. They just brute forced it and, and wiped them before the rest could regroup and get there. So overall, really, really good aggressive play style from Argonauts. Yep, absolutely. Right. Let's see, let's see. Um, all right, so getting the lolly back up again for game two. Uh, all right, so Argonaut is going to attack now. And PG is going to have to defend. Um, PG once again on the back foot here. Um, but can they pull it back like can they did they pull last it back time? Again? Yeah, like in the final second, they almost were able to, to do it again, I think, on the B point there, but not close enough mm. this time. And Argonautas, if they win this one, they then they are definitely making a case for uh, getting top four already early in the season.
All right, lobby's up. You're welcome to join. I'm just trying to remember what the password was. Let's just double check on that. Uh, right, I'm in there now. Yeah, I mean, Argonaut's definitely coming out with a strong start uh, this season. Uh, this is mm -hmm. a this is a very big game for them because um, obviously, if they can win this second game now, because going into it, especially after last week, people were saying Pongar were going to be in the top four themselves. Exactly. Uh, with that win last week, so if Argonaut's then two out them, as we said, it is an, an attacker favorite map normally. So, can they pull this off? It'll leave him very good standing to finish in the top four if they do. There we go. <clears throat> Shooter as well. Alright, good, good stuff. Yeah, we definitely saw the combination of uh, Zakali and the Flamers um, actually being used quite, quite, quite effectively. Um, then I don't think we really saw like a counter to one or the other, uh, but more like them being used first by Argonaut as actually deciding the fight, I think, early, and then Bondguard's Zekalian seemed to be just a bit later. Yeah, getting that first throw was massively important mm -hmm. for them. That's how they got such a good trade on that first push on that uh, A-side resupply, because they got that first throw in, and I think they hit, killed most of Pongard specialists with that first throw. Um, so really important, that first throw. And then that's why the B-fight went so poorly for them later on, because this time Pongard was played a bit smarter. They left their Cocos up at the top, so they had the highest advantage. They couldn't get countered by the enemy Cocos, and they could mm -hmm. be throwing in the whole time. And that's how they won that second fight, so the first time they pushed on B. Um, but then obviously Argonauts had the defender advantage, they came back with their cav and they and they cleared it. Because Pongar didn't win cleanly enough, you know, um, Argonauts had a couple of guys flanking that ended up picking up the Cocos towards the end of the fight and drew some pressure back, which allowed the front to regroup again. Um, so some really good plays from both sides there. So we'll see now if, if Pongar can learn from that, make sure they get that throw in first. Yeah, absolutely. And it also depends how they defend as well. Are we going to see an A and B defense this time instead? Are we going to see a base defense maybe, you know, mm -hmm. who knows? Yep, I'm very glorious. Um, I, I... I would like to see Polgard be able to to also improve their gameplay maybe by by being better on the rotations as well. Uh, they've always been strong in the um, in like the strong team fights, but you can see when there's a lot of chaos, they they are maybe a bit exposed exposed here in terms of their uh, their, their strength and weaknesses. Mm. I might be overlooking into things there, but um, it's it's definitely it definitely was something that happened in this game that we just saw where. They definitely didn't weren't able to, to follow the chaotic style of uh, Argonautas. Definitely, I think that has always been one of Pongard's strength is is their team play, and so a team that then pulls them apart and forces them to try and have these smaller fights, you could see they just couldn't deal with it as easily mm -hmm. or as well as they normally do. So yeah, definitely good good uh, decisions there from Argonauts. Whether that was intentional against Pongard or whether that was just their plan for this map, regardless, mm -hmm. it worked. You know, it was a good decision from them. Absolutely was, absolutely was. Mm. Right. Looks like both teams almost ready, so we're gonna just gonna wait a minute, I think, for our last player to join. Make sure we double check it. Yep, everyone is ready. So just waiting for the ready checks, and then we're good to get our second game going as well. Um, with these B A, a and B defenses, or uh, well, not A defense, but B defense. Um, uh, the the time on this map is actually quite shorter than what we're used to. Uh, it used mm. to be a uh, Pretty solid, like skip the A and B part and then just go to the final. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially with the old version of the map, most teams would just drop A and B, mm -hmm. and then you'd be fighting on that base point, like you said. Whether it was an aggressive sort of front hold or whether they were defending at the back, you'd be fighting there for 10, 15 minutes. Whereas we saw this game, it was just like you know, two fights and it was done basically, because yep. um, the amount of time that was wasted in between and, and them not capping B. So exactly definitely changes the map and I think that's why it's a very smart decision from Argonauts because they know that Pongard has a lot of experience especially Pion has a lot of experience in shot calling these maps because he's played in tournaments for a long time now so doing something different trying to catch him off guard something he's not used to was a really good decision mm -hmm. absolutely new strategies and I definitely like what we're seeing today um, some again some teams weren't excited I think to play in Core Castle but it's definitely showing to be a fun match for so far all right, let's change. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Do we have everything? Yep, we're ready. All right, here we go. So, Falconati, Goodners, Shenji, Chefs, and Liao's are the bands we're getting underway. I'll make sure to switch to the camera overview here. There we go. All right, Arnold's leading, and they're going into the attack against Pondegard this time. Pondegard looking to make it under tie, perhaps, like they did last week on Yab against Yabari. Uh, but it needs to be on defense now. Alright, let's see what they're playing. 
I know again, maybe Argonauts pull something out of the bag now. It's a completely new way to attack the map that we haven't seen before. So we'll see what, what sort of uh, things they've got in store. Mm -hmm. A decent amount of cab again from them. At least at the moment, they might change it, obviously, but it looks like they're sticking with it. Which is, again, unusual for this map. Some is good. Mm -hmm. um, but if you, even if you look at the defenders, you know, they've got, what, two Hussars, two yeah, Cassas? Yep. Yeah, looks like Arnold Cassis, is definitely right? gambling on being able to get the A point and then fighting for the B or in the final, because they also got a lot of camels in there. Yeah, I mean, you look, they've got, like, one, two, three, four, uh, four people that have one melee, two cav. So if they don't take A and B or A, A or B with the first push, mm -hmm. they then have people that are down. But those heroes can then go through. They can go towards B. They can draw pressure there. So they're not going to be just you know AFK. But if Pongard are holding the gate aggressive like Argonauts were, they won't be able to get in. And they'll have people to sat aside. They can't do anything. But Argonauts do have the benefit of they do have some ranged heroes, whereas Pongard just had one musket last time. Mm -hmm. But then having said that, Pongard now has two muskets this time. And again, that could be to stall the ram, because yep. um, muskets can do the same thing as a longbow. Yeah, so okay. as long as you're, you don't even have to kill the hero, the units that's pushing it. As long as you're hitting the front unit, that yep. staggers it. It gets exactly. off the ram. That stuns it. So yeah. it will just two start, muskets can do the same thing. Exactly. It will just start to move back, and the battering ram will stop moving until yep. another one joins their spot. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's kind of thing. All right, here we go. Let's see who wins the siege war. Well, Pongard have no one really going to B side at the moment, so they should lose this if Argonauts can hit the shots. They did miss the first shot though. Second yeah. shot hit. This might actually be a final defense, I think. Seeing how many units are being sent back from Pondgard. Yeah, look at that. Every single unit going back to base point. This is the this is the classic Kurok style. <laughs> El mm. Classico. But will it work now though? You know, the map is very different now. It's very yeah, absolutely. And good I... for attackers. Defenders have to be aggressive coming up onto that top wall. Because yep. if they let the attackers get that position on the top wall now, above the base point, they have the Coco advantage and just throw down and clear everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm also quite sure that Argonauts have already spotted that because they are able to shoot with yeah, the they're, Scorpios they're inside the city. So are they going to catch the short sword here at the front? Looks like it. they are. Yeah. I don't know they're with Iron Sides. They just shook it out here with the support from his team. Yeah. Not a dent <laughs> in his armor there. Argonauts are jumping off the wall here. They need mm -hmm. to go cap A. Hey, come on. Okay. Okay, realize, they realize now that it's not defenders. So they are going back to A now. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we're on to a slow start. So this gives us some time to start thinking about what's going to happen perhaps on the final point. So uh, we do have our flamers that we've been seeing so much on these final point defenses uh, because they're really, really strong at the gate. It's almost impossible, I think, to push through those with your flamers there as long as they're alive. But now with Kurok, we got this high ground situation where mm. the attacker can actually gain an advantage and start throwing down from at, at two sides instead of one, basically. Or three, you could almost. Yeah, say. I mean, if I was in Argonauts' position here, I would take out as many Cokers as I could and just bombard that mm -hmm. point. Because if you look at where Pongard is setting up, you know, it's very static positions. So I'd have a few, maybe a five man group pushing from that front gate to draw pressure to make them sit in a blob and defend it and then just bombard them with coconuts from the top, yeah. right? Because they, they have to defend it. You know, that, that's the benefit of the attackers is you can force the fight where you need to because the defenders have to defend the point. Mm -hmm. They can't let you get in and get positioned. So you can choose mm -hmm. where you fight a lot more easily. Yep. As the attacker. Yeah, and there's not even uh, that many uh, for the virtue as well. There's like a unit of pack imported by guard, then we got a couple of units of imperial shields, and then it's all crescent monks and one claimer. Yeah, there's just one in pike and one Madao, so they could even just run full calf here and just brute force mm -hmm. this. And we know that Arnold has got the, the calf. Pike is now, the in pike and the Madaos are in their base as well, so if they just brute force with calf mm -hmm. through the front, there's literally nothing to stop them. Whether they see that is another question. Because it looks like Pongard are playing with their Cav in spawn to stop Cav flanks through the base. Yep. Oh, these got him missed spot though, but they're sent back. Yeah. Nah, no, he couldn't get it. But yeah, yeah, I like this. The Argos are playing very aggressive, I like this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and they they probably realize they have like 15 minutes, so even if they die a couple times, it's it's so much time to, to get all yeah. that push in. But they're getting killed here in, in the backline, though. Yeah, for sure. They die for that because they managed to move the Cocos out of the way. But the fact that they're willing to play aggressive like this is something that a lot of the, the sort of the, the newer teams won't do because they're too scared of dying. You know, you've got like you said, you've got 15 minutes on the clock. Why not be aggressive? Why not take mm. some trades? Exactly. It's a nice try. But like you said, looking at the units, like why not just do a push? You know, mm. they have a lot of cav. Just take your cav out and do a big push. 
I, you want to get some people up on that top wall scouting out where their units are, but if you see that these medallions and these imp pikes are in base, just brute force the front. Like, you look at the point right now, it's just monks and two imp shields, and that's it. Exactly. It's like five units of monks and two imp shields, so just brute force it. At the moment, Argonauts still got a lot of units in the front gate. Obviously, that's the guys that just died, but they're not really setting up anywhere. And I guess they're just unsure what to do, or they're just going to do some more suicide pushes, maybe, mm -hmm. um, and jump in with their heroes to try and get some kills, but yeah, they're, they're just not really grouping anywhere. Definitely looking to regroup at the B point right now. I've got the one Sikali yeah. in there. Uh, I think that's the only one for now. Not sure if they brought anything, any more Sikali in. Let me check. One, uh, they, they, got, they got two, right I think, now. yeah. So they've got one out right now, and then they've got a flame out right now yeah. as well. And they got a second uh, Sikali in, but that's the one player that has the flames out. So, mm. that'll be tricky. So they need to make a choice there. Yeah, if they get this position up on the top, they can farm those infant shields on point. Mm. And it looks like Pop Guard is going to though. contest the position here. Yeah, the difference I would Ooh. say actually against the Kelly now as well. Pop Guard do have uh, claymores, so if they take a frontline fight, Pop Guard do have a bit of an advantage because of that. Nice pickup there. So that's going to delay Argonautas maybe even more. Yeah, they're having a bit of a deathmatch fight down here at the bottom mm -hmm. of the stairs. The problem is, it's Argonauts with a couple of short swords and Pongard with six mauls. Yep, so, so the damage is there for sure. Who's going sure. to win? <laughs> <laughs> win? Yeah. Three short swords and a maul or six mauls? Like, you know. I'll so take the hammer over the, the swords any time of the day right now. Um, yeah, so, but with the units now, even though six mauls are not able, well, okay, maybe they might be able to, but they they won't be able to get back up on the wall, I think, like they did just now. Uh, the no, front line, though, the mauls are still pushing. Yeah. They're out of position, they killed some guys, so they're going to try and push up aggressively, which I like. Yeah, absolutely. So now Pongard are being the aggressive ones. Oh, yeah, they're pushing them. back, actually, now, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Argonauts are going to get completely wiped in the middle here, so they're going to lose these 40s, imp pikes, imp shields. But can they collapse on this top side here? They have the flames here to the advantage. Yeah. Zikali throw as well, but uh, it's already a um, dealer for life sitting on a Zikali and Zikali yeah, gonna as well. With their mauls, though, so yeah. Pongard are wiping a lot here. Okay. Zikalians still doing their job, but yeah, they lost the front fight, yeah. so what can they do here? We've got but a they are heroes with base. Look at sitting this. on the, if on the base set point. Up on yep. base, if they trap the stairs now and farm the heroes coming one mm -hmm. by one, they could literally win the game right here. And uh, remember, only one unit of now, one unit of Imperial Pike, so all these scaf. Uh, it's going to kill a lot, a lot of units, even if uh, they don't SR charge there, wiping the first set of units coming down. But they need to kill these heroes on point. They got some monks coming now as well. This is a huge market. This is a massive throw from Pongo. Oh, 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 and this trap. This. this is a big trap, and more and more cav coming in from Argonauts. I think they might win this here. They're killing a lot of Pongo. And what can Pongo do to counter this? If Pongo get a good cav charge themselves, maybe, but they're just losing heroes right now. Eight heroes alive for Pongo. Like, Argonauts just need to focus these heroes on point. Like, don't worry about the units at the bottom of the stairs, yep. just focus these heroes on point, keep killing them one by one and get this set up. Counter Cav coming in from Pongard now, though. Yeah, and more Cav yep. coming from Argonauts. Look at this huge Cav coming in from Argonauts here. A lot of Cav from both sides here. Ooh. That was a very big charge there that killed a lot of Argonauts, but still, a lot of Pongard dead as well. Now there's Camels coming in as well, this is so huge for Argonauts. They can keep this pressure up, they can win this here. Yeah, they, they got the camel brace on the point right now, but Pongard is definitely pushing hard now. They are 300 units in the lead, though, so they may have the reinforcements to do it. Yeah, Argonauts need to win this fight, and if they don't, then they're going to struggle to come back again with that unit lead. Yeah, they've got to pull back now, they just can't do it. If they'd had one melee with that those units on point that could have held long enough, mm -hmm. they could have done something there. They were just too much cab, nothing to Absolutely. hold. But still, really good decision from them to go for that fight, but yeah, they just needed one melee. Like, 140 that had been in there from the start would have yeah. cleared everything. Or one monk just to help okay. DPS the heroes. The mistake they made is they were trying to commit too hard to the units at the bottom of the stairs when they'd already killed the heroes. So those units weren't going to do anything. At that point, you just need to kill the heroes on point because mm -hmm. then you keep snowballing, you keep maintaining that advantage of the heroes. You know, they were, they were 13 v 8 heroes on point at, mm -hmm. at one point, and then they still lost that. Yep. But still, really, really nice play from them yeah, there. Absolutely. Really, really close. You can see it's only like, what, 8 or 10 seconds left just to cap it. Alright, so small reset here. Let's take a look at the units that they have left because I'm pretty sure that not all of Argonautas are having their best units out right now. Actually, still a good setup so far. Still some decent stuff, yeah, but they yeah, would have they used a lot of their cavern. That mm -hmm. is the problem. They do have the one Zikalian, so that's really good. A lot of um, Mirmelons on the side of uh, Pondgard, so they're looking to go really aggressive like they just did. One thing we should be, bear in mind with the unit difference, though, is that Pongard do have 250 more Cirs. Mm -hmm. than Argonauts. Yep, so unit-wise, the only real advantage is Pongard have about 150 more tier 4s, yep. but it's not that much of a difference, really. 
one good fight from Argonauts here and they could potentially take this, especially with how much time is left on there. Mm -hmm. They're coming with the Flames, they're coming with the Cocos again. If they get a good position here, pick off a couple of heroes and then push, you know, they can get a good push in here. Yep. And I do... they're, they're losing some Flames and Cocos this musket at the moment, so they yeah, need to be aggressive and push these muskets down. Yeah, they're trying to push them out. And I think that Pondegard's going to try again to attack this position here. You can come in from three directions, so it's like theoretically a pretty good position. You can see Argonaut is there, not sure if they want to get in here, I think. Yeah, Argonauts need to pull back and trap like mm -hmm. they are doing, but I feel like it's a little bit too late. But they've got the flame advantage here if they can get in a good position. So if they can hold the front and stop well, their heroes coming through... Well, ooh, what possible are in position with the flamers and the Zikali. They're gonna throw them right now, so that's gonna do a lot of hurt. Not the best positioning for Argonauts flames here, and they are getting jumped on now. Mm -hmm. They're Not also really fighting at the, main, at, at the well base enough. point at the same time against five heroes. Yeah, they tried to do a base push with some of their cav, which is... Kind of working, they're outnumbered. Are they going to win the top fight now because no, of no, this? No, no, absolutely not. Oh, well, maybe maybe right now because so many from Pondegard are retreating, but even yeah, then, Pondegard's still pushing into them. The and this is what I was saying, like, you have the ability to decide where to fight, right? Because some of them went to the point, they had to panic and run back there, because yeah. if they lost control of that, they lose. But Pondegard still won the top fight as well, so I feel like this is all she wrote now. Absolutely. But maybe Argonaut's going to have one good wipe and do something. Yeah. Base actually doesn't look that... No, no, base that's absolutely done, absolutely done. It looks like a lot of units, but they're all sitting on their last lost health yeah. right there, so that, that's pretty much done over. They are killing some more of the flames upon God there, which is good. Uh, just that I think the treb usage wasn't the best here. I think mm -hmm. they only treb once while that fight happened, and they didn't treb again until now. Um, so they just need to be more aware of those trebs, which is, again, something that some of the, yep. the less mm. experienced teams use. Yep. Because as soon as the fight starts, you just think, i got to focus on this fight, but you know, an extra treb in there could have been the difference from winning or losing that fight. Yeah. This fight was really, really good from Pondegard. Uh, they did lose a lot in the as well uh, at some point, though. But there's still seven minutes. Like there's so much time right now for us to try and get something. But what can they really get? Mister Billy, still got his flamers out. I think unless they got killed at the last minute. The oh no, they they they, they did get killed eventually. Yeah. From our courts now, just suicide now. Look, he's in pikes. I don't mm. know what they're doing here. So that was one of their better units. It was how they were retreating. That's why yeah. the retreating system in this game is not ideal sometimes. Not um, perfect, yeah, to say the least. So from well, I think it's actually. Many, so. I, I think they would almost like need to pick out like get out like 15 miles to try to jump into as many units as they can. Yeah, the I think that's where you can see the big difference in the setup here, right? Is mm -hmm. that Pongard is just killing heroes faster on that base point. Mm -hmm. If Argonauts had more hero killers there instead, of, I think they had like four short swords on that base point when they were first capping it. If they'd had four malls instead. Yep. They would have killed the heroes faster. Yeah, so. Maybe not four, but you know, if they'd had more DPS there, they would have killed those heroes faster, being able to control more of that point. Um, do we have any specialists left on either side right now? Let's have a look. I'm pretty sure they are all gone now. So a lot of Winkly Zoras from uh, Argonauts left uh, on the field right now. Cataphracts on the side of Pondegard. Yeah. Ipop still with Azekalian on uh, Pondegard, but that's the only specialist that we have. A lot of Forte Braccio for Pondegard and uh, some Imperial Shields. Pondegard continue to pick up the, the hero kills. That's something that they've also con done continually during the game, I think. It's get yeah, I think this get one of the two kills and then they fight. Yeah, it's the biggest difference this game is just the amount of hero kills they're getting. I know part of it is Argonauts um, going for those more suicidal plays to pick off mm -hmm. the specialists, but overall, just in the fights as well, you see that the fights are going more towards Pongard's side because they're winning that hero fight. Right, is that Pongard again? Uh, Sorry, Argonaut's going to go for a backside push because then they have the cav that can rotate to point. And if you look at this, mm -hmm. they've got two camels, two hussars. So if they can bait Pongard up on top again, they can then get that cav to go to point. Yeah, they're going to try and bait the trap. It looks trap like they're just going to do a full base mm -hmm. one. Yeah, full base push and bait into that trap, which is a nice nice plan, trying to bait into the trap. They're catching some catters here, which is good. Yeah, they need to get any small victory they can. Actually, this is another way. Now, any unit that they're able to pick off now, or if they're able to get a hero pick and the retreating units mm -hmm. will walk through them, that's going to give them a small advantage again. So Definitely. Just taking their time now to get the perfect setup. I think, depending on, no, no matter what's going to happen, I think looking back on this game for Argonauts, they probably should have maybe wanted to do this strategy earlier in the game instead of banging their head to yeah. the same wall twice. And again, other teams have done this in the past this map, mm -hmm. so it's a good way of doing it. Pushing from that backside, you can bait them into the trebs because that's one area where you can treb as an attacker. Um, it's not as good now because obviously you've got that giant structure in the middle that does block some shots with the new version of the map, but still it's a much better position for them to use those trebs that they had left. Um, they've only got three left now, but they're trying to get as much use of the map as they can. But the more they bait them in, the better. They're trying to go in the back here. I don't know what they're suiciding for. Uh, the Cocos they're trying to chase for now. So MSA is on point trying to kill those Cocos. 
Is he gonna be able to do anything here? You got four of them, so eight still alive. It's not bad. Yeah. But is that worth one of the heroes dying when they've only got exactly. four minutes left in the game now? I was kind of curious if the Zikalian maybe stressed out and threw a couple of grenades that might also have helped. If their ammo is a little lower. They're pushing in now, baiting the trap. This could be a very big trap here. Oh, yep, yep, yep. yep. Uh, not bad. Uh, One thing I don't understand is the. Oh, no, um, they, just, oh they, they destroyed you in the Forte Barcio there, so that's good. The scimitar and the musket, they've been standing above the point for a long time now. Um, not really doing anything. So Malabrake and Drash. Malabrake, like, there's a musket, why is he not off his horse throwing stuff the whole time? You know, he's now going in, but I feel like it's already over for Argonauts here because they just lost too many heroes on that first mm -hmm. push. Pushed into that choke and just lost too much. Yep, and his trap is going to be too late. There's only that's one trap left, so they've definitely been using all, all of the traps, but that's not going to be enough. Yeah. They, they they had to go for that all in, but they just lost too much. They mm. couldn't clear the 40s on the front, and then the 40s farmed their cap that was there. Okay. Really good try though from them. So you know some really nice pushes from them. It's just mm -hmm. that initial fight up on top where they got flanked and just lost too much there. Um, and then obviously got close to capping base was a good rotation from them, but they just didn't have the units there to hold. And they didn't have the DPS on their heroes to be able to clear uh, Pongard's heroes. So. Um, it's still really nice though. And considering we were saying it was a more attack favored map, you know, both defenses won. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so far it's, uh, what is it, 75% win on the defense, for Feudal at least. Mm. <laughs> we need to check back about the Rusticus, but yeah, definitely looking quite strong. I mean, there's so, there's actually been a few interesting places to defend, and I think the defense that Pondegard did worked surprisingly well also because the uh, spot on this high ground is really hard to trap with these two, like, solid. Uh, well, yeah, so that well, it's, 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 it's just wood, but it blocks so many traps. Yeah, really aggressive defenses from both teams, which is nice, mm -hmm. just in different areas. Um, and I think that I think that also caught Argonauts off guard. You know, they wouldn't expect them to have that aggressive defense there, yep. and they just overextended that first push. Three or four of them went through; the rest stayed behind and got Absolutely, cut off. Yeah. And then, yeah, they just Ponga did really good push in, wiped that first setup, then have the advantage to push through. Mm -hmm. And the one thing about Ponga is when the fight happens, you see they are jumping with two, three, four malls onto the back line yep. of the enemy. Whereas Argonauts aren't doing that as much. They're trying to do that first, but then they lose the hero and can't push from them. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the big difference. That just comes from experience, right? So those mm -hmm. those guys on Pongard will be the, the guys that have monks, the guys that have units that you don't need to micromanage. So they can just be running through and going for that back line whilst their units are fighting on the front. Or it's, you know, they've got claymores in there. You charge your claymores in, you press three, you press two, you don't need to do anything else really after that. So you can do the whole XV thing with them, but at the same time, you can just tap a unit, you can run through with your hero, just jump into enemy back line. And that's where they punish it, because every fight you saw, on this defense especially, Pongard had no no heroes jumping into their backline to kill their specials. Mm -hmm. Whereas Pongard themselves were sending three, four, five heroes into Argonaut's backline to kill their specialists. Yep. And that's how they were winning these fights so cleanly. You know, really good defense from them. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, once again, Pongard's going to take the tie in a match. Um, for the second time in a row, we haven't seen that many ties last season, but this time Pongard starting out with two. Um, it's kind of a, a, a scary prospect. Like for sure, they want to pick up the win eventually, just to get the points and maybe contest for that top two, top three, or top two, or top one finish. Um, but definitely scary for teams to play against Pondegard now that um, you know that Pondegard may very well win at least one of the one of the sides in on the on the matchup. Oh, definitely. I think this is a good, a good strong show from Pongard, um, especially on this defense. You know, the attack was a bit shaky. I think they've got things to pick up from that, but it, it still shows good good prospects from them. They can definitely be finishing as a top four team. And, and that's why I think this season is so much more exciting, because they're a lot closer with the teams in this pool. It's not like you have a top four and a bottom four. You've got these teams. A lot of them can beat any of the other teams. Um, so it's going to be a very exciting season. Yeah. Absolutely. Looking up for a strong start, and it's going to get even better. Uh, I'm just going to tell you right now, we've got 30 seconds on the clock, but uh, this game is very much done and over. There's only two guys from Argonauts sitting on the map right now. It's Drowse and Arco Freebus, if I'm correct. Oh, he's left. It's only Drowse left. Um, so the next match will be Odin's Legion versus No Beaches. Um, it, that's definitely the match of the day for me, I'm thinking for, for most people. Very hype match, yeah. Yep, absolutely. So probably a potential like 1-2 finish out of those two teams, although yeah, but he's looking really strong again today. Uh, Pondegard also not out of it yet, and even Argonautas, I mean, they got a point as well right now, 1-1, one, one, finish. Mm. So Definitely, I think it's open to, to any team can really mm. win at this point, to be honest with you. There's quite a few of them that could take first, yep. but yeah, No Beaches and, and Odins have a lot of history together um, in previous tournaments as well, so obviously they fought each other um, for the third place in the CBL most recently. Um, so yeah, there's, there's definitely history there, so mm -hmm. this could go either way. Yep. I do think it's leaning more towards no beaches, 
So what I've, I've always said about Odin's is they are a strong team that has the capability of beating any of the other top teams. Like mm -hmm. They've beaten plebs many times in scrims and stuff as well. The problem with Odin's is they don't have the consistency. You know, So when they play to their game, they can beat any other team. But it's just, can they play to their game yeah. when it's needed? Exactly. We'll see if they can play through the game in just a couple of minutes. But for now, let's go over the MVPs quickly. So Godkong and Sura picking up the MVP performance on the side of uh, Payan. Although Xeteris and Rapid Wave doing quite well with the hero department also. Also Pipo getting 5 hero kills. You can see the hero kills really mattered. Like the unit kills, not even that high, but the hero kills is really what done it. And of course, yeah, I mean, also the it, Crescent it, Monks, right? Like a lot of low, uh, un low units count, I think, generally. Mm. Yeah, I mean, just it's the hero kills overall, right? So if you look mm -hmm. at it, um, Argonauts died 48 times. Yep. If Pongo's only 26. Exactly. So that's t 22 hero difference. You know mm -hmm. that, that has a big difference, to, especially towards the end of the game when Argonauts are having those one or two heroes suiciding for the specialists. They then have to wait 30, 40 seconds for them to come back.